Nathan Simmons, and I'm the Lord of the Harvest. <laughs> and I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood, and this is the Spooky Linings Playlist, Ooh. a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's spookiest endings. And, uh, you know, Nathan, uh-huh. uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Yeah, the deuce. Not very a spooky ending, but... No. Wow, what an ending. Certainly <laughs> an ending, right? It, it's definitively an ending <laughs> i'll give you that <laughs> and uh y- you may be noticing that one of our voices is missing but mm-hmm. uh mally moore said he'd broken out of a window in hell mm-hmm. whatever that means <laughs> uh and ignore this big bowl of chili that i got right here uh <laughs> that's overloaded with with prime meat this is a show that knows prime meat mm-hmm. you can't skimp on it we give you prime meat every monday we sure do <laughs> We sure do. And this is one of our meatiest oh. episodes yet, Dustin. It's a meaty episode, I'll tell you that. <laughs> a girthy uh, one, if you will. Oh, uh, God. I had I had something for Mally I was thinking about earlier, and now I can't remember what it was going to be. It was a good bit, mm-hmm. and now it's lost to the ages, so oh, it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, I know what it was going to be. Oh, yeah? Now I was just going to be grunting this whole episode like Leatherface. Uh, 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 <laughs> that's what I almost did for my intro, and I was like, do I want to do that to these boys? <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, our third and out of four installments mm. of Spooky Linings this month. Mm-hmm. Um, it's this is my favorite time of year. Yeah, I'll tell you that. I love the Spooky Linings. Um, yeah, you've been watching anything good? Anything spooky lately? Mm, not sp- mm. not necessarily good. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did see Barbarian. Yeah, uh, and you saw Barbarian. What so a film! Real quick, uh, you know, under thirty seconds. Yeah, and and coming out this episode dropping like a month after the movie. Oh yeah, it's so like. <laughs> I thought that's one of the reasons I haven't been watching anything spooky because it's still September. Sure, sure. <laughs> Just sneak sneak peek behind the curtains. We're well in advance this season. I love we're, it. We're on top of our shit. I love it. No, Barbarian, thumbs up. Yeah. I, diet malignant, I think is how we're all, <laughs> we're yeah. all resigned to around here. Barbarian's like a gentleman's 7.5, I think. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I, I, I really... I, I can't say that I've seen anything like it this year, yeah. and uh, I think that's a stamp of approval. This isn't really a spoiler, but man, yeah. the part I left at the hardest uh-huh. was the first reset. Oh, sure. How it goes into that first sure reset. Yeah, it <laughs> reset. slams you in the face with it, right? It's so funny. It's yeah. so fucking funny. Yeah, no, there's some there's some great comedy in that movie, and, and intentionally so as well. But there's also plenty of stuff that I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be like yeah. this right now. Speaking of which, that's a good segue into this movie. Texas Chainsaw 2. Lots of comedy. Oh, yeah. Uh, lots of scary bits. Yeah. Maybe some stuff you're not supposed to laugh at. Maybe some stuff you are. The producer's not very happy about no. that. No. Oh, well. We'll, we'll talk about these producers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's the Canon Films yeah. Company. Spoiler alert for those of you who don't know. My this guys. This is Canon all <laughs> top to bottom. Um, oh, yeah. Th- no, I – so I watched – the first one uh-huh. in preparation for this one, because I haven't seen it in a while. Sure. And man, that movie, Oof. top to bottom, pure genius. Yeah. That movie is flawless. It's a nightmare on film, right? Not an ounce of fat no. on it, which is ironic because it's a movie about cannibalism. Hey-o. Here's the thing. Toby Hooper comes back. This mm-hmm. is 12 years later yeah. a- after the original, something like that. Um, and he's like, well, guys, no one noticed – the black comedy in the first one. I disagree. I watched that first one. There's not a lot of black comedy. No, but in that I, movie. I, I think that there is a, a little bit. I mean, the, the all the stuff with Grandpa, I think, is actually pretty funny in the uh, first one. Yeah. But it's but it's also like it's also horrifying. Like yeah. when you realize that that's not a corpse is one of the best reveals in horror history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it but it's not. I guess it's it's funny unintentionally, but like yeah. it is scary. I mean, they do the same bit in this one of a mm-hmm. woman with her head over a bucket <laughs> and a bunch of hillbillies yeah. about to bash her brains in. Like, yeah, this movie does a thing that I think most of the sequels do, which mm-hmm. is it's something you also talked about uh, in terms of next week's movie. But like, 
every scene in this movie could stand to be a minute and a half shorter to yeah. two minutes. <laughs> yeah, which is surprising because this movie's already like a hundred minutes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like it's at breakneck pace. Breakneck pace. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, um, which is a result of canon. Like sure. those guys obsessed with. Movies being ninety minutes and and under they had to they ha- you have to fit them in as many screenings as possible exactly yeah exactly yeah and it didn't help that this movie was released unrated mm-hmm. so that that limited the number of theaters they could put it in as well well this should this should stay too like um I I've only seen the original mm-hmm. this one mm-hmm. and then everything after that two thousand three reboot I haven't seen the Matthew McConaughey one oh, interesting okay I think there's another one or two in between there's, there yeah part three and then the next generation and then the reboot yeah. yeah which I think it's hilarious that they call that one the next generation I just think of is Patrick Stewart <laughs> in there Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right well it was yeah it's so weird because it was filmed under the title The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre which also doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Once you put return in your title, right. you're in trouble. Look at last week's. <laughs> oh, sure. Did you, um, so did you see this? Did you, well, you watch this like directly after watching the first I one? I thought you were about to ask me if I saw this in theaters. I was like, Nathan, I got some, some <laughs> information see? to give you. Are you uh, <laughs> older than me? Yeah. <laughs> um, you, no. So what I did is I watched, I, that was my plan initially, but I ended up watching the original late at night. Mm-hmm. And then the next day I put the sequel on. Which makes sense because this one feels like you've been roused, bleary eyed from yeah. a memory of the yeah. first one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, I had only seen this one once before and it was at your recommendation Mm -hmm. last year i Mm -hmm. think or last season you mentioned it i was like oh you know what what the hell i've never seen it yeah it came up when we were talking about uh mandy Mandy, yes because we talked about chainsaw fights right pretty sure yeah boy yeah that first watch is like a fever (laughs) dream like and then yeah but you're right like the problem with this movie is it's it's only like a hundred and or an hour and 40 minutes Mm -hmm. but man does it feel a lot longer. It doesn't have a whole lot of plot there. Not, though. not like, a lot happening. Uh, no. And, it, you know, and that's the strange thing because it feels like they're trying to put more uh, importance into the legacy of these characters. But yes. then they don't really so much do anything with it as much as they have just a lot of like little bits. And yeah. like, so I, I, I have a lot of fun with this movie, but I do think that uh, it's, it's clearly not as strong as the first one. Not at all. Um, and like you said, there, there are bits that just really drag, mm-hmm. but um, the radio station. Oh, sure. No, for me, <laughs> Takes as great as the production design is in this movie, like I love the Battleland theme park. Yeah, we're just kind of standing around talking. In we it. are lots of standing around in this movie, and I, I, I love the sort of like weird rock and roll, like rockabilly energy that some of this movie has. But I feel like whenever I talk about this movie and whatever I think, I've, this is only my third watch. The stuff that I remember is always. The t- the chainsaw duel. It's mm-hmm. the attack on the bridge. Yep, and it's uh, Dennis Hopper testing out his chainsaws oh, at the store. Oh my god! And so it's it's and the final shots, of yep. course. But like it, I f- always forget that there's a lot of like twiddling your thumbs in between there. So much. Like, well, there's only three set pieces uh-huh. there's like the radio station sure there's the amusement park and then there's like the chili cook-off and that's about it and there's apparently a, a significantly larger sequence that was cut from the movie for pacing yeah a whole movie theater scene yeah yeah uh which i i would love to see but that that footage like, apparently doesn't exist anymore that's unfortunate yeah but um watching this movie it was just you know <laughs> It, I feel like because I saw this so late uh-huh. that it doesn't have as much of an impact on me. And I still think it's a fun movie. Well, it's it's one of those that, like, you've heard about its reputation forever, right? Like, yes. this is the Gonzo Texas Chainsaw movie. And then... Well, there's that. Uh-huh. And then the fact that Rob Zombie based his whole filmmaking career <laughs> off this movie. 1,000%. <laughs> you can't watch House of a Thousand Corpses now. No. Or Devil's Rejects, and or even those later ones, without being like, oh, this dude just 
copied and pasted. From, he's like, he's doing chop top. He's he's giving me the cook. Let's give every <laughs> character the chop top energy, and that's a Rob Zombie. Movie. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you have a movie full of chop tops, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> God, God, I I'm gonna go ahead and say it. You fucking hate chop top. I fucking. Hate, I mean, <laughs> Bill Mosley does a fantastic job yeah. at making me hate this character. That's, Absolutely. That's the thing about this movie. I hate it. Uh huh. But. I fucking love it. Yeah. Like, no, it, oh. it is. I, I was sitting there watching Chop Top doing his little bits, going through the record collection. Oh, and the fucking bits are endless. <laughs> They're never. <laughs> and I kept thinking, them. like, I I did say that I liked this movie, right? Like, and th- th- <laughs> like I kept having these moments where I was like, yeah, but this is like. This is interminable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. There's the chainsaw fight. Like, <laughs> yes. Well, and when you put this on the schedule, I was like, yeah. fuck, I got to rewatch that again. Uh-huh. I just, I think, I think the problem is I need a buffer yeah. of at least, I'm going to say five years between okay. what rewatches. Like, <laughs> I need a lot of time. I think this was the first time I'd seen it in like three years. So okay. I think that it was like a, a healthy amount of time to, yeah. to sort of like, because you feel gross after watching one of these, right? So much more gross than Hellraiser did. For sure. Like, I feel disgust. Like, I feel the Texas heat. Yeah. I feel the rancid stench coming off these people. <laughs> like, like, Bill Mosley picking his head, Ugh. his head with the coat hanger. Oh, I had to look away every time. Like, every time he put it in his it. mouth. Yeah. Ugh. And let me tell you, man, this is what I do for podcasting. The, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, man. I'm here, but, uh, no, last <laughs> night, I he's got big Beetlejuice energy. <laughs> so much Beetlejuice energy. Yes. Um, but last night, I recorded an episode for Oh, That's a Scary Movie about the 80s remake of The Blob. So, I just feel like I need a shower after this weekend. By the way, I just saw that for the first time. It rules, right? It, yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw it a couple months ago. Yeah. I was going, I've been on like an 80s kick, which Hell is nothing yeah, new for me, but like I've been going back and watching all the 80s movies, yeah, like especially the low budget horror ones. Sure. The blob fucking rules. It's so good. Yeah, it's fucking great. And it also, talk about not an ounce of fat on that movie. Nope. That movie is, again, breakneck. Pace. For a movie about a big old blob. <laughs> yeah. And I tried watching the 50s one and fell asleep. Oh, it's... So, and yeah. Steve McQueen can't even save that screenplay. No. Yeah. Well, he's also playing the world's oldest, oldest teenager. teenager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Mm-hmm. The new batch. The new batch, yep. I don't know, I because I, I haven't seen a couple of them. I mm-hmm. think this is maybe, which is crazy, because this franchise, honestly, isn't that good. Right. I think it's top half yeah, for me. Yeah, I agree. I've always felt like this is one of those franchises that shouldn't be, right? Yeah. Like, that first movie is such a perfect uh, assault on the senses, yeah. and it feels like, well, that's... If the last we ever saw of Leatherface was him dancing in the road... Terrifying. Yeah, it's still... Yeah, exactly. And you're like, you're, you can never top the holy shit, what did I just watch of that moment. Yeah. Uh, and... and to their to multiple people's minds, uh, that is a challenge that they have tried to accept. Mm-hmm. And I, I would say, I mean, there's what nine of these now between all the various reboots Ye- and I think sequels. I think so yeah, I think so. I, I granted, I have not watched. Um, what was it? Leatherface, the sequel to te- or the prequel to Texas Chainsaw 3D. Oh, but like I, I think I saw that one. Uh-huh. I know I saw the one with. Uh, Alexander Daddario in it. Get him, cuz. Oh, God. Do you think, cuz? That's Texas Chainsaw 3D. 3D. And yeah. Leatherface was after that? Yes. Okay. I think I did. Yeah. There's multiple prequels at this point. Oh, the timeline makes no goddamn sense. No. And I consider last year's uh, Netflix reboot to be one of the worst films I've seen in a few years. <laughs> I mean, we were just talking about this off mic, yeah. but... The term woke means nothing anymore. <laughs> and that movie is trying to be quote unquote woke. That movie's trying to be relevant, but it does it in all the ways that are just like tone deaf and offensive. Yes. I mean, the the whole school shooting subplot in that movie oh my is God. infuriating, especially in how it resolves. When they when they show it. I, like, yeah, it's so irresponsible. I was like, are they really doing yeah. this? Yeah. Oh, my God. And then. There's some kind of weird meta thing with that 
the lead actress of um this this newest Texas Chainsaw Massacre being the girl from eighth grade. Oh sure, like, that uh, that kind of like some not 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 uh intentionally, but uh-huh. setting some kind of through line there. Like, I was like, oh. It also it also doesn't help that uh, Leatherface looks like Carl Havoc. In that oh movie. my god, he so fucking <laughs> does. Yes, he does. Oh uh, yeah. Now that movie, fucking ooh wee stinky it's bad <laughs> but it, it's but it, that's what i mean when i say like it's faint praise to say that this is like in the top tier of uh texas chainsaw yeah, movies it's a huge huge a gulf, gulf yeah go. well for me it's original yeah it's i actually like that reboot a lot i like the remake a lot too yeah and i think it's just this one yeah and then all the others you can put right in the garbage disposal <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what's funny is I watched the third one first because mm. that was the one that was like the easiest to edit for television, I think. Oh, sure. Because like what you put, if you put the first one on TV, it's like two scenes of people in a hallway. Because yeah. the, th- the thing about that movie is it's not the bloody content. It's the 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 overbearing atmosphere, <laughs> just general dread. Yeah, the, the tone. Well, that's the thing. There's not a whole lot of blood in that one. There's no. like... Honestly, the only thing I can think of is uh, when Leatherface lets the accidentally lets the chainsaw yep. fall on him. I think that's like the only blood spurt you see in the movie. Because yeah. otherwise, it's like people getting put up on hooks off camera. Dude, the scene of the girl getting the hook. Oh, my God. Oof, it's rough. It's rough. And there's nothing there. Yeah. There's no sound. Nothing. Well, and, and when you do get a score in that movie, it's the it's sounds of a slaughterhouse and saws mm-hmm. being like manipulated. It's it's drones. That movie is yeah. upsetting. That movie it's a masterpiece. That's <laughs> it a is. fucking masterpiece. And it is truly wild to think that the same director made this one. Yeah. Well, I think he had everything going against him because this is post poltergeist. Yes. And this is a good segue into this too. So actually let me go ahead and, uh, run the, uh, the, the reel here and we'll start talking about it. Sure. So yeah, the year is 1986. Um, and as we were just talking about the director, Toby Hooper of the original Mm -hmm. and of poltergeist comes back to direct this one. And the only reason he does is because the budget is so low, mm-hmm. they can't afford to hire anybody else right. to direct it. He was going to produce it, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, well, if I fuck it, I guess I'll just direct it. Right. And uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, maybe, I guess maybe clashes with canon mm-hmm. is what resulted in this. Because as we briefly talked about it, canon was expecting a horror film. Right. And they... They didn't get it. Right. They didn't get this. Well, which is not unusual for canon. Well, canon, we, we, we talked about them a little bit during our Spider-Man episode last year, but they're famous for trying to stretch a dollar as much as they could to oh, the point where they were like, not even, <laughs> can we build some sets and you shoot both Spider-Man mm-hmm. and a Masters of the Universe sequel mm-hmm. on them? <laughs> yeah. And is this our first canon movie? I think it might be, Which unless you guys did Delta Force without me. <laughs> I don't think, I can't recall if we've done that one or not, no. Um, but yeah, no, if, if for the listener, if you don't know who Canon is, uh-huh. uh, the Canon Group, just do a quick Google yeah. uh, of the Canon Group and- Look up the documentary Electric Boogaloo, which is so great. I just watched it. Oh I man, just it rules. watched it. <laughs> yeah. It's- it's eye opening, yeah, uh, for sure. And there's even a little a little section in there talking about this movie. So that's right. It just yeah. it, you, we could spend a whole episode just talking about canon, honestly. But because <laughs> sure. that that does that needs itself for lining too. <laughs> there is a there's also an excellent podcast called the Canon Canon where they yeah. go through all of canon films. Boy, uh, d- yeah, it's so great. Yeah. Um, but the movie stars uh, Bill Mosley, mm-hmm. Bill Johnson, Joe Bob Briggs, Jim Sado. Sido? I, I don't know. I think it's Sido. So, oh, like that makes Max sense. Von Sido. That makes sense. Yeah. Jim Sido. Kinky Friedman. Yeah. Great name. Uh, Dennis Hopper. Yes, sir. And Lou Perry. Yeah. The movie had a budget of $4.7 million, which is honestly... For canon, that's kind of on the high end. Yeah, yeah, they that's that Superman four money. Uh, oh my god, the <laughs> Superman four stuff of that documentary, Jesus, so crazy. Uh, it managed to gross eight million dollars at the box office. Yeah, um, and currently sits. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but it currently sits at a forty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I think that seems fair. I think that's fair for the general audience. Yeah. But if you're in on the joke, uh huh, and 
you know the production of this movie and Toby Hooper's like vision. Sure. I think it succeeds at what it's trying to do. It's just I don't always have fun watching it happen. So I think 60s. Yeah, I, maybe? I think 60s probably makes a little more sense. Yeah. But Roger Ebert puts it perfectly in his review where he just talks about how the pacing in this movie makes no sense. Nope. He's like, Dennis Hopper has the most thankless task playing a man who spends the first half of the movie looking distracted and vague and the second half screaming during chainsaw. God. <laughs> and we'll talk about Dennis Hopper because I, I tried uh, with all my research might yeah. to find out why he signed on for this movie and i can't find anything he was kind of in a slump at this point but but this is blue Ve blue the, velvet he shot and blue velvet. hoosiers yeah come the out same this year. year isn't that fucking crazy <laughs> and two other movies he had five movies come out this year yeah and he gets an oscar nom i think he was just like i'm gonna do whatever i can to make ends meet and then i think if you sign up to do you know 12 movies in a year at least three of them are gonna do okay i i guess so it's the like, Nicolas cage rule i i just well i guess i think they even maybe say this in electric boogaloo but like it does make sense mm -hmm. if you're either an up and coming actor or struggling actor sure. to just do a low budget horror movie. Right. And especially with someone who has the acclaim that Toby Hooper has at this point, because sure. he's done Poltergeist, he's done the original Texas Chainsaw. Well, the all the stuff surrounding Poltergeist really kind of hurt his career for a while. That's because, true. I mean, to the That's point true. where like Steven Spielberg had to take out like a, a full page ad in the trades to say like my friend Toby directed this movie I promise yeah like Toby Hooper has said that he thinks that all of that stuff kept him from getting an Oscar nom for Poltergeist because mm. everyone was just like well this is clearly like a great movie uh, I don't think you would have got a you don't think nom. so <laughs> anyway <laughs> nah. but I mean I don't know it's a, it's such a bummer when you look at all that stuff because it it looked like Toby Hooper was like on an upswing mm -hmm. and then he you know he sin spends the second half of his career bouncing between studio pictures and like zero budget trash yeah it's unfortunate and like he never really settled after that yeah but um what I was gonna say is it makes sense from an actor's perspective to do that because mm -hmm. like Horror movies are some of the easiest things to pop. Oh, sure. Because they're low budget. And if you get a good one, mm -hmm. they they explode. They yeah. become either franchises mm -hmm. or like cult followings, which this eventually did get. Mm -hmm. But Dennis Hopper, man, Dennis you did fucking Easy Hopper. Rider. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, also, depending on who you ask, he was not the easiest guy in the world to work with. Oh, can I, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, man, I got to see a, like a documentary of the making of, of mm -hmm. this before it's too late. I need to see what Dennis Hopper. I want to see BTS footage, like how Vivian Kubrick did the making of The Shining. I want to see <laughs> the behind the scenes arguments. Because there's no way this was easy no. for Toby Hooper with Dennis Hopper. There's no way. <laughs> and he ended up basically like following this with a bunch of insane decisions. Yeah. I mean, he did. I mean, after this, he does Super Mario Bros. He does Waterworld. Mm -hmm. I mean, thankfully, he does Speed in there, which one of the greatest movies of all time. We've already talked about that. Oh, yes. One of the best, yes, one of the best deaths in a movie of all time. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I'm taller. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about Dennis Hopper is, mm -hmm. and we'll get to the trailer in just a moment, but sure. he said at one point that this was the worst movie he's ever done. Right. And then he goes on to do Super Mario Bros. and then says, oh, no, that's Never the worst mind. movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The movie that almost made Johnny Legs and uh, shit, what's his name? Uh, just lost his. Uh, oh, I can't remember either. I can never remember his name. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know what you're going to say, but yeah. Yeah. Brain farts. It's okay. Super Mario Bros. Uh, yeah, no, the movie that made, almost made Johnny Legs and Bob Hoskins drink themselves to death. Oof. Yeah. It's it's the Wild West yeah. back in the 90s with video games <laughs> and stuff like that, dude. Nobody cared. Sure. sure. But all right, we, we've already rambled on for like 20-something minutes. Let's right. get to the trailer. It's that kind of movie, man. <laughs> The Texas Chainsaw trailers are always bad. Well, but are they? Oh, well, first of all, Canon logo right there. Ago, the first couple. Audience. Well, the, that reboot America, trailer, the teaser. The reboot trailer is really good. That's how they sold it. Yeah. They sold it on the sounds of the camera going off. The camera and that dope-ass uh, song to the siren cover that plays during it. 
Well, which I completely forgot Vanished. too. That sound of the camera is in the original movie. I yes. thought that was something new, no. but I because I hadn't seen it in a while. After no, a and then for s- the other movies, the try to find ways to put it in, even out. if it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like they they use that camera sound in the Netflix one for a trunk opening. That's true. That's true. And then Saw used it as well. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. The buzz is back. That's not a bad trailer. Pretty cool trailer, but gives you none of the comedy. Very misleading. Have you ever seen the trailer for Texas Chainsaw 3? I have not. It is. Should we watch it? Yes. Okay. Actually, (laughs) it is truly fucking insane. All right. Let's pull it up. Uh Uh-huh. All right. It's just called Leatherface. Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. What a stupid name. Two movies called Leatherface. I, I think we talked about this off air. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how old of news it is at this point, but it was just announced kind of ish for us. That um, Ryan Murphy, Jeffrey Dahmer show he's doing with Evan Peters has the stupidest <laughs> with the name. really long title. Has the yeah. stupidest fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> what was that year? 1990? Uh, was it 1990? 1990. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't want to get that. Was it 2016 or whatever that other one came out? Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is it. This is fucking crazy. Oh, <laughs> Dad, I could use a little wind here. <laughs> <laughs> it's contemplative. Definitely got some Tommy Boy vibes. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, you know, when uh, Hot Rod, when Rod's getting all uh, oiled up by the oh, yeah. Riverside, his roadhouse moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some tales are told then soon forgotten. But a legend is forever. Here we go. Oh, no. Lady of the Lake with the motor-powered chainsaw. What? What? (laughs) What? 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 Yeah, and if this movie was about Leatherface becoming a Highlander... I was just about to say the fucking Highlander vibe. Yeah. Now, and that scene has nothing to do with Street. that movie. The real terror begins. November for the for the 3rd. listener, it's a lady a that's, lady's hand comes out of a lake, throws a chainsaw on a leather face. <laughs> the chainsaw is struck by lightning, yeah. and then he turns to the camera. That's the coolest fucking it, trailer I've ever seen. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, oh boy! Yep. All right. Well, yep. I think we are uh, properly steeped into uh, the territory now, where we can start talking about this movie. Yeah, let's do it. And I want to start at the poster. Uh huh. <laughs> because the Breakfast Club. <laughs> I can't believe the producers of this. Well, I can believe it, but yeah. The, for those who don't know, just look up the poster for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. It's just a parody oh, yeah. of the Breakfast Club poster, and that tells you all you need to know that this is a comedy. <laughs> right. This is a comedy lampooning its own canon, right? Uh, pun intended. But yeah, it's it's a brilliant move. Like it's a brilliant marketing move. It is, <laughs> and something I thought about too while watching this movie. It is interesting. How many of these very successful, in terms of longevity, Mm -hmm. uh, horror franchises inevitably turn to comedy? Yeah. Like, they end up having a comedy uh, entry into their their canon. Sure. Because there's this... There's, I think, Bride of Chucky kicks it off for that one. Jason Lives. Jason Lives has got some pretty funny stuff. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy's Dead. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think... You could maybe even put Halloween Resurrection in there, too. Oh, sure. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Yeah, I was going to say with the kung fu fighting. Yeah, I guess you kind of have to. Man, we're we're eventually going to get there, right? Yeah. After oh, enough seasons. I think, I think Resurrection is definitely coming up at some point. Oh, Stay boy. tuned. Okay. Um, But yeah, just for this one, mm-hmm. the second outing is comedy is a very interesting choice. Right. And, and not only that, but like, it's a comedy that starts not like that, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, this opening sequence, they're kind of aping the crawl from the first movie. This opening narration is too fast. It's too fast. And also it ends with quotation marks yeah. as though, who are they quoting? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, uh, before like, uh, 12 years ago, there was some, some shit happened yeah. and it's happening again. Uh, all right, let's get to go. Let's go, 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 go. <laughs> I wish at the very bottom it said, uh, thank you, John Larroquette. We wish you could have made it this time. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the the, the canon influence uh-huh. even rolls over to the narration. They're like, uh, can we just speed him up by like, I don't know, 20%? Like, <laughs> And the score that sounds like 
Peter Griffin like panicking. Oh my like, god, the score. It's real bad. Which is crazy because this the soundtrack fucking rips. Yeah, dude. Every we song. got the cramps. We got Oingo Boingo. Dude, that Oingo Boingo song is awesome. It rules. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. But I, I guess we should discuss too the differences. Like in the last movie, mm-hmm. it's just these people that are hippies. They're running out of gas, mm-hmm. going back home or whatever. Yeah. In this one, it's it's all yuppies. Yes. Yeah. For the most part. Which I feel like if they're going to do that, this radio station shouldn't be a rock station. Sure. It should be something else so Stretch fits in line with that. Because she's not really a yuppie. No. Like, Rick the Prick and Buzz definitely are. It's hard to get a feel for Stretch. Not yeah. only just because uh, we don't really get any moments with her. We, like Our only real like plot development moment with her is when she says, like, I want to do something important. Yeah. But also, like... She runs the radio station from sunup to sundown and is a reporter. <laughs> Who is running this radio station? We know it's not LG. Who is her boss? Yeah. Who does she report to? Yeah, because she makes it. She, first of all, you're right. She works a full double shift <laughs> and she's on scene. Yeah. And. LG makes that comment of like, oh, you're going to get in trouble for doing this. I'm like, with who? No with, one's with here. Whom? <laughs> no one's here. And, and she, she's like, she's like David Hasselhoff in Baywatch where he's, <laughs> you know, he's he's watching the beaches by day. He's solving crimes by night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, a, you know, it's a full time job sometimes. That's what the 80s were like. There's so much about this whole radio station that doesn't make sense. They have to wait for other people to hang up. They cannot mind. hang up on them. I was just going to say they got a problem with some kind of the wiring with the folds here yeah you you can hang up you yeah can definitely hang up on these guys no it, yeah we're not talking to your you're not talking to your crush like you're not saying no you hang up oh like God. you were in charge <laughs> my francesca would have a hell of a life <laughs> if he couldn't hang up the fucking phone oh like, yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know there's lots going on with this radio station that i just don't get but here's a question i'll put to you sure. right at the bat who is the more annoying character rick the prick rick the prick or, bu- or chop top Oh, I was chop- going to say Chop Top. You could throw a buzz in there. Sure. Why not? Man, I would say Rick the Prick. I. It's so weird how many characters in this movie giggle like maniacs. It, I, but what is that direction? Yeah. Like, is it, hey, Rick and Buzz, you guys are just giddy because you're, you know, a bunch of... Whole- yeah. You're going to the biggest party of the world, as yeah. Buzz says. And, and you're hormonal because you're young yeah. and like, yeah. It's, is it that or is it just... Fuck it. Let's make this movie funny. Let's just have this guy laugh a bunch. And that does it. Yeah. If you, if, <laughs> if he keeps laughing, then we'll, we'll be on board. Yeah. And the audience will laugh, of mm-hmm. course. So it does. I don't know. It's Rick the Prick is like, so goddamn annoying. Yeah. Buzz is too, but nowhere near on this level. No. And they're so gross. He wears his patients out, real, my, my patients out real thin, mm-hmm. real quickly. Yeah. I agree. Although I will say, opening the movie with two dudes driving around shooting holes in stop signs yeah. is the most accurate depiction of Texas I've ever seen. Well, there's that, and you're like, instantly, I don't like these guys, yeah. which is strange for a horror movie because you kind of want- You want to like somebody. Yeah, yeah. you want to have some kind of connection, and that way when the people die, you know, you feel something. Sure. But, um, I don't know. I just, I thought that was real weird to just start the movie with these intolerable people. Oh, awful characters. <laughs> Yeah. Let's let's then talk about what happens after this because this is probably we haven't actually done this in a little while. Mm. But I think Leatherface getting introduced on this bridge mm-hmm. is the scampiest little Oh <laughs> my gosh, this little dance with the hitchhiker's course. Jig with the well, yeah. So that's what I didn't get until like reading up about it because yeah. i did not realize this is the hitchhiker from the first movie who it's not totally clear but no. yeah and and bill mosley is supposed to be his twin brother yeah if you didn't know that bill mosley who got his part by yep. making a parody film of texas chainsaw which yep. toby hooper thought was funny yeah which is <laughs> that, that seems about right for this movie yeah for sure which is weird because i don't think bill mosley's a terrible actor either like, no no he's good yeah i think his character's awful yes and annoying but then i look at him in you know the the devil's rejects and i'm like yeah this dude could this dude's fucking got it sure yeah but it also makes sense that this was like a launching pad for him right oh, like people yeah. were just like this dude has so much fucking energy so much he's down for whatever right yeah i mean he's got to have the worst makeup out of everybody in this movie <laughs> with the sure. metal plate in his head yeah that plate's wild yeah um 
So they're playing chicken with this truck mm-hmm. that they did earlier, and then now they're on this bridge, and the truck cuts them off. It drives backwards at the same. Sp- this is the longest bridge in America. This <laughs> bridge, sure yeah, goes on forever. And I'm just like, <laughs> so what happens is they're they're riding. Uh, <laughs> Leatherface gets on top of this truck and starts freaking out uh-huh. with this puppet, <laughs> the Hitchhiker. It's pretty funny. Uh-huh. While this rocking fucking Oingo Boingo song is playing. Hell yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Buzz, or not Buzz, uh, Rick shoots him. That reveals the Leatherface behind the puppet. Uh Uh-huh. And this whole time, Leatherface is going at, there's lots of chainsaw and metal in this movie, which I appreciate. Oh, so much of this movie felt like, especially at the radio station, Toby Hooper being like, can we just see what the saw will go through? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's so much of saws just going into things, which makes sense. I mean, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but this whole time, I'm just like, Buzz, just hit the brakes, man. Like, that's all you have to do. You you don't have to keep putting your foot on the gas when someone's going at you with a chainsaw. (laughs) Yeah. You're not in the Death Star Trench. Like, you're not going to get a a reward for continuing. Yeah, exactly. But, man, this first kill Mm -hmm. with him getting his scalp cut into it's good it's really good he's he's like he kind of looks down buzz kind of looks like he doesn't believe it yeah. like he's processing it as his yeah. head falls in half it's fucking wild great effect and it's good, great that you got of course the goat tom savini on this movie sure. doing the, the practical effects and stuff it's great oh yeah um but you know first great kill and then we get introduced to <laughs> Lefty. The God. The God shows Lefty up for this is a movie. God. <laughs> yes. So Dennis Hopper is the uncle of Sally and Franklin from the first movie. Right. That's the the final girl and the guy in the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And he's come to So what they say is this is what doesn't make sense. This opening crawl says mm-hmm. it's been months since or it's been years yeah. since uh the first movie. Right. And they did a month long investigation and found nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, how is that possible when They're like the house was gone? It's like the it it's like that scene in uh it's like the grand scale version of when uh, the body is missing in I still know you or I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Like, like the the trunk full of crabs. Here, here's the thing, <laughs> it's just like Sally or at least Franklin was like, this is my old daddy's house, mm-hmm. and it's the house next door. That's right. How do you, All Sally has to do is say, yeah, it's the house next door. Go check it out. Can you guys go over there? Yeah. I'm, by the way, I'm covered in other people's blood. Can you listen to me? Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> she only comes back in that new one, huh? Yeah. Th- I mean, there's – she – that actress has a uh, an uncredited cameo in uh, Next Generation, but mm. it's not clear if it's meant to be the same character. Well, they do that a lot because uh, Stretch has an uncredited cameo in one of these as a news reporter. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Where they were like, we don't have the rights to the character, but we want to show that she survived. Yeah. Which I kind of love that. <laughs> which, of course, she did. Yeah. I mean, if you've seen the end of this movie, of course she did. <laughs> she survived, but she is broken by the end of this movie. Like, yeah. that is not a person in there anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, we should talk about her, too. That's uh, Caroline Williams, who plays Stretch in this movie, yeah. who I think is... Awesome. I think this character's great. I think she's so good in this. Yeah. Do you know how she got, and at least if IMDb is to be uh, believed, do you know <laughs> yes. how she got her, her role in this movie? She had a very intense audition. Yes. <laughs> so the, the 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 word on the street is <laughs> when she was called into the casting room mm-hmm. with Toby Hooper and the casting director, she bolted in, screaming at the top of her lungs, barricaded the door. The door. <laughs> And then did her scene, and they're like, holy shit. And she she also, like, kicked Toby Hooper out of his chair or something like mm-hmm. that, so she could use it to... Yeah, it's so wild. Yeah. Good for her. Good, yeah, good for... It seems like everyone, everyone was pretty down for this movie, except yeah. for maybe Dennis Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... Yeah, this radio station doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. We, we cut to... The cowboy devil party at the hotel? The, well, I was... <laughs> Which you get a great uh, Toby Hooper cameo. Yes, uh, yeah. Getting a beer tossed at him in his little uh, horns hat. It's pretty great. Uh-huh. Um, then I was, I was going to actually say, because we don't necessarily have to go beat by beat for this movie, but mm-hmm. uh, I was going to say the, the chili cook-off. Oh, sure. Which is, I, I hate it. I don't like this scene at all. I That's think it's, some chunky fucking chili, man. Who the fuck would possibly want this trophy after you filled dumped? with chili why it's disgusting dude well, and not only that but like so we're at this chili cook-off because stretch and lg are covering it for the radio station yeah the, the rock and roll radio station by the way sure and they drive out to oklahoma for the for the fucking thing mm-hmm. and 
Lefty staying in this hotel after putting a thing in the paper saying he wants someone to come forward with information, mm-hmm. and then she shows up and he's just like, "Hey, fuck off! I yeah. don't believe you. <laughs> like, I don't want to hear what you have to say." Yeah, his motivation, his motivations throughout the movie just flip flop for yeah. some reason. Also, LG, I think, just dis- displays some very intense Nathan behavior, uh, <laughs> building a little fry house. Oh, that fry house looked great. It does look really good. What do you think LG stands for? Uh. Little grumpy because he's a little grumpy throughout this. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Would you have? I had little guy because <laughs> I'm. That's me. Yeah. I I feel like though this, there's a story to be told at this chili cookoff, and sure. it's not who the winner is. I think there's a conspiracy happening here, Nathan, because he keeps winning. Well, he keeps winning. Yeah, and the the woman announcer who tells that he's won. <laughs> Uh huh. She is clearly on the take because she's like, "Oh, he's the winner a second time in the row, and he's very handsome." I'm like, "What was that? Sure, That's the tail. sure. You're giving it away." <laughs> yeah, there's bones in more than the chili. Am I mm, right? Somebody's getting a lot of bones. <laughs> we we gotta talk about Jim Sidow's performance. Um, in both this movie and and the first one, the original, yeah, it feels like sometimes he suddenly remembers he's on camera. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like a hundred percent, yeah. Like there's moments where his face goes completely blank, and then he starts giggling again. Yeah, there's there's actually a shot at the dinner scene in the first movie where he looks directly in the camera and starts giggling. Yeah, <laughs> it's so strange. Yeah. I, I I feel like his character is. It's just on fast forward. Yeah. Because he never shuts up. No, and he's clearly (laughs) been asked to like ad lib a little bit, but the ad libbing is him repeating the same sentence over again. Yeah. Did you see it? Did you? Did you see it? You see it? Go get it. Go on and get it. It's just, it's, it feels like he's trying out different things and not committing to any one of them. He's like, well, if that doesn't work, don't worry. In a moment, another one's coming up. Like, when we get to the, the amusement park. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, a motor mouth it's not he never shuts up same with bill mosley he's yelling about taxes yes oh yeah bill mosley cannot shut the fuck up in any scene he's in except for his intro scene i think that was the direction yeah i think that was like let's do a bunch of stuff and we'll cut together the best stuff and instead it's just a static shot of them all yelling at each other just when the only scene chop top has any kind of uh energy to him that isn't annoying Mm -hmm. is that introduction scene yeah but even then he's still borderlining on it like <laughs> sure oh i can't i can't with these characters it's it's so much it's somehow rob zombie tones it down in his movie don't you dare I, but he does <laughs> you you Tootie fucking fruity but that's not nearly as bad as jim sidow and bill mosley are in this movie <laughs> they are non-stop they are n- they don't run out of gas they are more focused yeah that's true at least Sid Haig has like some threatening aura to him and he gets that lowered brow sure. and that intensity to him and even um sherry moon zombie does that too these guys never they never there's stop. never an ounce there's never an ounce of threat to them yeah and leatherface too in this movie same thing really i mean lots of screeching he, he's doing little little hip wiggles yeah <laughs> That are adorable. Oh, yeah. They take the, they extrapolate from that dance in the first one and go whole hog with it. Oh, he evolved into the 80s from the 70s. He's got a lot of boogie in him. Sure. Yeah. (laughs) He's got a, he's got, yeah, he's, he's got hammer pants on. He's all breaking. He He did. He knows what was going on. Yeah, canon film. (laughs) Imagine, imagine Lefty comes into your chainsaw establishment. First of all, a chainsaw store. That's all they sell. It's just Just chainsaws. chainsaws. They have signs on the wall with chainsaw repair. Uh Uh-huh. Here's the thing about this chainsaw store. Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> there's there's a couple of things, actually. Number one, why is there gas already and chains on all of these chainsaws? Every chainsaw in this movie is always gassed up, Fully. including one attached to Grandma later. Mm-hmm. I, I, I also love, too, that this scene, Lefty doesn't say a word. He doesn't. kind of good. Yeah. And really, once... Um, the shop owner realizes that he's not saying anything. He doesn't really say anything either. Yeah. Until they get outside. And, and now he's getting hyped. Do you know what line he says with Lefty? Oh, my kid banana. Oh, my kid banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's an improv line, right? That's just something that, that guy says. A, I wrote it down because I was like, That's not what he said, That's right? That's not a real line. Well, 
I th- I think my subtitle said, "Oh my damn bananas!" Oh, he says, but kid. I'm pretty sure he says kid. He yeah. says kid for sure. Yeah, and so strange. You you can't you can't sell chainsaws to this guy, dude. No. Look at him. Look, yeah. When you see someone trying to dual wield yeah. chainsaws, that's a red flag. I love he's he's like doing stabbing motions in yeah. the in the store. It's so funny. Yes. It, like again, this is why you have registries, and mm-hmm. you and you know what? I think we need to look at some legislation here and put a, a waiting period mm-hmm. on the purchase of chainsaws. Because <laughs> again, if you're trying to duel with a chainsaw, there's no possible way you're going out here to do some kind of construction, absolutely or, not, <laughs> or landscaping, not at all. Especially when you live in a state that had a very widely reported massacre story. Oh, exactly. If, if chainsaws had the reputation mm-hmm. for what they did in this universe, you got to have <laughs> cops at every <laughs> chainsaw store, every chainsaw emporium. Yes, Mr. McGorgan's <laughs> chainsaw emporium. Hey, I'd watch that movie. Absolutely. Yeah. No. So Lefty is going. I'd ham on this tree screaming uh-huh. like a fuck. He does just turn on a dime. I don't, I don't know. I guess that's the comedy. Yeah. Which is, it's unfortunate that I have to say that. I guess it's the comedy. But it's also <laughs> indicative of, I, I, look, I love Dennis Hopper. Mm-hmm. I enjoy him in this movie. He is clearly phoning it in in this oh, movie. Yeah. He doesn't like, give hardcore. a shit. hardcore. No. But it, it kind of leads credence to the black comedy stuff of it all. Like sure. him phoning it in is yeah. what makes that character memorable. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. If, could you imagine if he was serious throughout this whole movie, like dead serious? Mm-hmm. I, would it be funnier? I think some of it might actually be funnier if he was like, if he played this like fucking dirty Harry. Until they get he gets to the amusement park. Because I think right. you, you, when he goes full ape shit in there. like When he finds Jesus halfway through the movie boy. and decides to start prayer- <laughs> praying for every line. We'll talk about that amusement park scene because there's a lot to talk about. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, his motivations flip flop. Like, oh, yeah. like, now he's decided to go find Stretch. Yeah. I want help. I don't want help. And then doesn't tell her he he disappears for a long <laughs> stretch hey, of this well. movie. Yeah. And it's it's not warranted because yeah. he's like, oh, I had to, darling. I had to use you as bait. I'm like, did you? I like to imagine that this is like the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead of Blue Velvet. <laughs> like uh-huh. when he doesn't, the reason he's late coming to save her is because he's over at fucking Dean Stockwell's house. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that idea. Yeah, he's all on the oxygen. <laughs> yeah, right. Baby wants to fuck. <laughs> There is actually a like very few bits of actual genuine horror in this movie, but yeah, I gotta say, Leatherface popping out of this pitch black. This reveal is so good. It's like it's a jump scare that works because yeah. it's it actually has weight to it because something is happening. Yeah. You know, a lot of modern jump scares, it's just oh, a broom fell right. or a door yes. closed. This no Leatherface is there. This launches us into the next scene. Yes. Yeah, it's so good. It, it it the only real bit of tension you get in this movie mm-hmm. because it's like you think Chop Top is gonna make a move on on Stretch. Yes. Like he's gonna do something to to attack this woman, and then it's not even like a a signal. No. It's not like Chop Top gives he's him just a signal. There. Yeah. And Leatherface just happens to be there. And I will say it also helps that it comes at the end of the sequence that I think is genuinely uh, in upsetting where, you know, this guy's shown up at the radio station in the middle of the night and refuses to leave. Scared. And he's clearly making her scared. And yeah, yeah there's some uh, malignant giallo lighting in the scene. <laughs> and uh, we've got Beetlejuice on meth here. <laughs> it's a lot of good buildup. Like yeah. you said, a woman by herself yeah. in a radio station in Texas. Right. And with known chainsaw massacres happening in the area. Mm-hmm. And like this guy's clearly not on the up and up. Right. And yeah, that, that jump scare is so fucking good. It's, it's really good. The only scary part of the movie, I think. I agree. And it, it also results in my my favorite line delivery of the movie. Mm. Leatherface, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you knocked off my Sonny Bono wig. I, I do love Chop Top shouting, nom nah, flashback. It's oh pretty my God. Fucking Which good. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to it, but that was that line inspired an, uh, a partially made 
spinoff movie for Chop Top. Oh, where he's in Vietnam? I'd watch have that. You, have you heard about this? I have not, but now I'm interested. So, so, well, I, so Toby Hooper's son, William Hooper, was going to make a movie called All American Massacre. Yes, I have heard about this. Yeah, it was a spinoff that would focus on Chop Top being interrogated after somehow surviving the end of this movie. Yeah. Uh, and it, part of it would be his like flashbacks to Vietnam and stuff like that. But they only shot about half of it and then could not secure funding to finish it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. There's footage out there. It looks like dog shit, but no. I, I'd love to see it cut together someday. I guess we haven't talked about, too, that Leatherface is not played by uh, Gunnar Hansen in this movie. That's right. He's played by Bill Johnson and... I don't think he can hold a candle to what Gunnar Hansen was doing in the first movie. No, I agree. But it works for this movie, if that makes sense. Like, Definitely. Gunnar was terrifying, and Bill Johnson is just, it's funny. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a funnier performance. It's a more childlike performance. Yeah. Which I guess is fine. I don't really like the characterization of Leatherface in this movie. Like, when he's dancing later with stretch i don't really like it i mean have we i mean there's not a ton of movies that have brought back previous leatherface actors either i Mm. mean the texas chainsaw massacre the beginning i think is the exception to the rule with andrew bernarski Mm -hmm. coming back from the the reboot but yeah uh, yeah, otherwise they they have gone through almost as many actors as they have films yeah yeah no, it's uh, it's like I said. I think it's right for this movie, but it's still mm-hmm. not as enjoyable as I don't think as Gunnar Hansen. Well, there, Gunnar Hansen's performance. There is a, I don't know, like it, maybe it's because he's not playing the comedy, but yeah. there is like a weird innocence to that Leatherface too, where you don't know that he knows that what he's doing is wrong. I'm gonna say this, and it it may come out uh, come out like I'm uh, being insensitive, okay. but I'll I'll preface it with this and saying. I have a child that is high functioning autism. Sure. I think Gunnar Hansen is playing it. I mean, probably not intentionally because mm-hmm. it was the 70s. I don't think that, I mean, that wasn't really a thing, but we didn't have the vocabulary yet. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't, I think he's playing it as someone who has some form of being on the spectrum. Yeah. Like, I agree. When he's killing those, the first two people in that mm-hmm. movie, the guy with the hammer and the girl on the hook, mm-hmm. it's not done out of a sense of maliciousness right. or anything like that. It's just what he does. And that's that's what the remakes did as well. Yeah. Where, or the remake, that series was basically like, he doesn't know any better. This is how he was raised. Yeah. That's what he's been taught. There's no sense of anger behind it. And that, yeah. I think that's encapsulated perfectly in that dance he does at the end of the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think no, I, I think that's absolutely one of the reasons why that character uh, caught on with people because it is such a it's there's it's so hard to ascribe motive to him. Yes, and in this one, I think Leatherface has a lot more agency outside of what his family wants him to do, and it, yes. as a result, he's not as frightening. No, he's he is much more childlike. Yes, versus a child mentality. I think in this movie, definitely, he's he has almost an agenda yeah like he's killing because he's told to until he doesn't want to and then he he also fancies himself a lady yeah he's got a girlfriend yeah as as uh chop top says later <laughs> bubba's got a girlfriend yeah i guess that's actually a good segue to talk about this scene i i it's upsetting <laughs> it's upsetting but it starts off so funny because leatherface just first of all they got a cooler in this yeah radio station that is essentially just Always filled with ice and beers and sodas. And I wrote down the Texas grape soda massacre. Because, <laughs> yeah, he's just going at this ice and these soda cans with this chainsaw. And it goes on for quite some time. Like, yeah. This could almost be like a parody of this m- movie itself. Like Until Stretch says, are you mad at me? Which is huh, a wild hilarious. Line. I lost it. Yeah, it's really good. I knew it was coming because I'd seen this movie before, but it's so <laughs> fucking fun. I'd fully then, forgotten about it. It turns into... Like a psych evaluation. Like a like, mating dance, too. Are you mad at me? You're not mad at me. No, no you're, 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 you're a good happy. one. Yeah. Yeah. It is it is bizarre. She sizes him up really quickly. Like, yes. seems to figure out she can pull the strings very quickly. Which would lend some credence to that whole line she had earlier about, I am I want to do something bigger. Sure. If it was like, I don't know. Like, I think- I want to um, go back to school. Yeah. Well, one of my- <laughs> one, Psychiatry. Yes. One of my uh, one of my favorite podcasts actually covered this movie. Mm-hmm. And they said it's it would have been better if she would have had a line of like, oh, I'm studying psychology at the local community college or something. Sure. Like, 
having this firsthand exp- like that would that would be a great scene yeah if that makes sense at one point you see her in class and she's trying to learn uh-huh. yeah like because that's what she's trying to do she's using some kind of psychology on him and uh-huh. it's working but yeah and then just the god it's so uncomfortable him rubbing the chainsaw on her crotch on her leg oh. <laughs> and then he like does a little dance with it where he's holding it like at groin height yeah but it's it's this weird sort of like it i don't know it's so strange it's like he's showing off like look because then he runs into the next room and was like look at all the stuff i can break he, he does that and then he does little dick thrust with the chainsaw it's so weird it yeah horny leather face is not something i ever need to see in a movie no I'm no good. <laughs> I'm good. But this, so it's like you have that really scary scene with him coming out of the, the record vault uh-huh. and you get this, I, I, might be my favorite scene of the movie. The comedy of it is just the cooler stuff yeah. with it. Um, and then LG showing back up because um, he went to go on a coffee run. Getting his shit wrecked immediately. Dude, the, the wide shot is so badly choreographed. It is. Where he, where he first gets hit with a hammer from Chop Top. He, it's so bad. Yeah, it's clearly not connecting. <laughs> nope, and he's bringing it down so slowly yeah. as to not actually hit the guy. But he does have a good line here because LG sees him and goes, what the fuck is going on here? What are you doing? <laughs> and he says, lick my plate, you dog. L- that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good line. But yeah, I, so at what point do we talk about LG and his clearly super strength that he has? Oh, sure. Surviving all of this? Sure. Somehow? I mean, he, he gets skinned and still manages to like cut her free when they get to battle land. He gets he he gets the twitching uh, with the hammer. I feel like once you get the twitching, it's a done that's deal. That's over. Like, that always gets me in these kind of movies. Yeah. Like when I see, if I see something, someone, trim, like someone's feet trembling when they're being killed, it's yes. always like a trigger moment for me. Yeah. No, he's, he gets bashed in the brains multiple yeah. times with this hammer. Skinned. His ribs are exposed at the end. He's like halfway to being Frank <laughs> from Hellraiser. He has his face cut off. Yeah. And... Oh, oh, you know, I'm going to save it because we got to, I got a lot to talk about with, <laughs> with that scene, but I, mm-hmm. this dude's made of, of sterner stuff as he much uh, Ermin Trout would say. <laughs> Here's what you're going to do. You're going to put his face back on. You're not going to tell anybody, Walter, you're going to put his face on. <laughs> you're going to get his chainsaw and that's the end of it. You're going to, you're going to play the tape on the air. So the laws know. Oh my God. Oh my God. Recast Dennis Hopper with Jonathan with Banks. Jonathan Banks. A hundred percent better movie, I think. I'm the Lord of the Harvest. <laughs> Bring it all down. Bring it all down. <laughs> oh, so good. A low energy lefty would honestly maybe be equally as good as a high energy lefty. It actually lefty. would be hilarious. Yeah. Boys, boys, boys. She gets taken to she gets taken to this amusement park. And oh, no, I'm sorry to cut you off. She does not get taken. She voluntarily follows them. You're right. She runs behind their truck, right? She has well, there's a nod to Psycho. She gets in her car That's and follows right. them, and it plays essentially the psycho score. <laughs> yeah. Uh and Lefty chases her. Why? I need to know why she does she this. She says, she mutters to herself, y'all can't get away or something like that. Well, no, you, they can. They sh- You should allow them to go. You should let them get away. <laughs> you should let them go free. <laughs> you saw nothing. You survived yeah. a maniac with a chain. He rubbed it on your crotch. Yeah. Let- don't don't go after these. Get the license plate if you need to. The Texas radio station massacre. Yes. You going to be the next one? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't. I would not have followed these people. Like it's a dumb decision. Yeah, and it ultimately leads to some dumber stuff because Lefty follows her to the amusement park. I'm sorry, girl. I had to use you. Yeah, and uh, as which I felt like was only an '80s thing. Mm -hmm. Stands, or maybe even a little bit into the '90s too. Stands perfectly atop a trap door. Yes. Who? Which is triggered by question mark? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. She's just standing there, and it just gives out. And then he tries to use a skeleton hand to pull her back up. It's a pretty good comedy. Like <laughs> it's, it's a good bit where it breaks, and he looks at it just sort of like, Ugh. Ugh. I don't think he realizes it's, it's a skeleton <laughs> hand. That's why. Until then, yeah. So she falls down this comically long uh, tumble. Sure. Like, t- like a Chris Farley and Black Sheep down this <laughs> fucking yeah. tunnel slash slide. So we should mention, this is like an abandoned amusement park that yeah. is- This place was real, too. Yeah. 
underground partially underground yeah don't get it i want to know how much of this was like part of the original park and how much of this is like the movie's production design because a lot of this is really cool yeah the the whole underground uh part of this park which is like their lair Mm -hmm. is really really well decorated really well designed it looks really cool how has this not been recreated for like a universal haunted house halloween horror yeah it, it the Horror Nights, it may have been. Really? I'm pretty oh, sure man. They have to have done a Texas Chainsaw one by now. Right? If The weekend is getting one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so fucking weird. Every time I see the commercial for that. I've been to it. Yeah? It's... Could you feel your face afterward? <laughs> Uh, I'm stalling for time so I can think of a bit to go as a response. Um, <laughs> I know it's they've definitely done they've they have to have done a horror uh, mm-hmm. Halloween Horror Nights. I mean, if they've done a if they've done a Halloween four corn maze, yeah, that's true. Um, no, they the weekend one was the first one I went to. Yeah. Um, it was fine. It, yeah, it's just the weekend with a bunch of other unrelated shit going on. Honestly. Very strange. Yeah, actually, it looks like they did one last year. Oh, wow. Okay. I I, I haven't really... I'm not really a, a Horror Nights fan. Like, I don't like Haunted Houses that much because it's usually pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's actually a video of it. Let's let's put this video on while we, while we talk and we All can right. just watch it. I love it. So, yeah, the, the amusement park looks great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the production design, incredible. Like, I love all the essentially Christmas lights running throughout it. Yeah. It's pretty good. Lefty seems to be uh, ready to save her, but instead he says a prayer, runs in screaming. This this part made me laugh really hard. He he charges the door mm-hmm. going like, ah! To, no, to nobody. And then he stops long enough to open the door and then runs in screaming yes. some more. Yes. Well, it's just funny too, because this whole last act in the, in the, the caves, yeah. like nobody knows Lefty's there. <laughs> no, it just every once in a while it'll cut back to him cutting more beams mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the cook being like, somebody's fucking up our house. Yeah, <laughs> but like for the longest time until, I'm pretty sure until he sees Stretch running, mm-hmm. like there's no, like nobody cares that he's there. Yeah. No one knows that he's there. Yeah. How big is this this underground cave system to where like nobody hears <laughs> And in fact, at one point, Lefty makes it so that Stretch can't escape yep. because he cuts a door right in front of her. Yep. He also kicks open a fake wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that just has guts inside. All of the guts in the world spill out. <laughs> yep. It's like it's like they took all the guts from the kids that died in Halloween three and shoved <laughs> them into this wall. <laughs> and yeah. Lefty just releases it. So which is I guess makes sense. I guess yeah. if you're gonna be a cannibal, you only eat the meat. You don't eat the insides. You right? don't. That's true. No, I Leatherface finds her hiding behind uh this barrel as he's cutting Lefty's uh, face off, like yeah. actually pretty well. Like he's got a little turkey carver. <laughs> he, he he does well, a good job. Yeah. And in order to hide her from the rest of the family, he I, why does he put the face over her face? It's not going to hide her. He, I think he's saying. I, I don't know. Maybe he's like, maybe they'll think she's the other body. It's it's so funny. <laughs> maybe she'll think it's that guy. Yeah. <laughs> she they put he puts Lefty's face and hat on her yeah. to hide her from the family. And he's just like, all right, I have done it. Yeah. It's like if they come in, they'll just think it's that guy. <laughs> and like, this is pretty good still, but it, it does. This scene is so much longer than it needs to be. So much. Well, we get. I, another really long scene, another dinner scene mm-hmm. uh, right after this. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, so she she manages to escape because, mm-hmm. and I just wrote down in, in my notes, all caps, giant font, no fucking way <laughs> LG is alive. No. There is no goddamn way. No. <laughs> his fucking ribs are show His his face is off. Right. And off. he has... M- Maybe the funniest line of the movie to oh, me. When he dies? Well, before, right before that, he says, I'm falling apart on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, he, I love, so one, I keep picking movies with skinless guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but he says exactly what I would say if I was dying. No, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, actually, I take it back. I think Stretch may have the funniest line of the movie because oh, yeah? do you know what she, do you remember what she says? No. She says, LG, they got you too? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? You know he, they got him. Did you, th- <laughs> yes. And do you think like, 
D- is this like Toby Hooper not being sure the audience will recognize him without his face and signature hat? <laughs> There's only like four people in this movie. I know who that guy right. is. Right. <laughs> well, and also like in another similar moment, you're telling me they hauled Franklin's corpse all the way oh, here? Oh, I know. In that, wheel- <laughs> that old wheelchair? And left the flashlight in his hand? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, here's, I got a question for you. Uh huh. If someone cut your face off and by some miracle you were still alive. Yeah. And saw someone wearing someone else's face. Yeah. Do you think you'd be able to tell that it's your face? Absolutely not. Right? No. I, I feel like. You take a face, it's going to be essentially flattened out, Uh and there's going to be so much blood and everything. There's no fucking... Like, he... I think he even makes a line like, is that my face? (laughs) (laughs) Right. I don't don't think I would be able to tell. No, it's not... It's not going to look like when... Someone wears the face, like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, it's just fully like that dude's head. Yes. <laughs> Someone else's body. Yeah. No, I, I don't think I'd be able to tell. No. It was my face. No. Around here, too, when we get like all the cat and mouse stuff with Stretch and the and the good old boys, mm-hmm. this, I, I know it comes after this, but this um whole production design, as good as it looks, yeah. did give me very big uh, Secret of the Ooze vibes oh yeah like when they're in the the subway car they turn into a home sure sure it's kind of decorated the same like there's like impromptu it is similar lighting too yes impromptu tables and stuff like that we like, were just missing like a pizza hut chandelier and a, and a bart simpson uh glass, <laughs> glass and, and right. uh oh david david warner david warner yes, yes. yeah if, if he was in the back cooking up instead of Jim Side Out. <laughs> oh, man. Better movie. The secret to the chili is the meat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what? Oh, I was trying to remember the line from TMNT to throw in there. You know what? I'm off my game today. I'm sorry. <laughs> then we get the chainsaw fight. Well, uh-huh. do you want to talk about anything about the them catching them in the corner? Catching Stretch? I mean, I do love... I love the argument. It goes on a little too long, but I I love Stretch first telling Leather, like, let's talk about it. I'm trying to be open with you. This is not going to work out. Yeah. And I love the cook saying, like, you got a choice to make, boy. Sex or the saw? Sex is, well... Nobody, Nobody knows, knows <laughs> but the saw is family. Well, he makes he makes a line earlier too about sex. It's like it's uh, what'd you say? He's, he's he's like it's a swindle or something right. like that. He's yeah. like it's always and he's the whole. We should mention the whole movie. He's talking about how he's a small businessman because oh, we yeah. kind of glossed over it, but. He's serving people chili at this chili yeah, cook off out of a food truck, mm-hmm. and like, and he's very preoccupied. Like, he's more of a businessman yes. in this, and like, he's talking about how tech ruined the meat trade. Mm-hmm. He's talking about how, like, oh, we gotta, we gotta feed a football team tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Big weekend for us boys, and it really does feel like this is more for his operation than it is for their own needs. Yes. Now, it's so interesting. It's it's much less. Him being paranoid that people are going to find out that he's cooking people yeah. and feeding it to them. Yeah. He's just trying to make ends meet. That's exactly it. Yeah. He's much more paranoid about, oh, I got to pay taxes right. on this stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He says property taxes. Yeah. Yeah. The rich don't pay him. The celebrities don't pay him. But the small businessman. He never shuts up for the God last half of this never movie. never shuts up. So, yeah, we, we kind of glossed over it at the chili cook-off. He's feeding people chili to the people, and that's how he wins. Uh-huh. Uh, a woman finds a tooth in the chili, and she, he goes, oh, it's, it's a peppercorn. one of those whole peppercorns. <laughs> 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 Bullshit. I know a tooth when I see it. <laughs> that's one thing I appreciate about you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of my gifts. It's my X-Men power. <laughs> I can always spot a tooth. You can't get, get one over Absolutely. on me. Absolutely. Um, but- he he misspells sex when he's just having that argument. S E S C E X. Yes, yeah, sex. Yeah, like you said, he does not shut up. Neither does Bill Mosley. He goes, I think he says Bubba's got a girlfriend about a thousand times. Sure. In this scene, he says hog bitch yep. a lot. Lots of bitch. I mean, it's like Freddy's kind of leaking yeah. over into this franchise at yeah. this point. Scary Terry. And Leatherface, much more grunty in this movie. Oh, yeah. Much more lick lipping. Um, yeah. Very gross. It's Did not like that. Just a gross movie. There's a lot of gross mouth noises in this yeah. movie. So they knock her out, and then we get another dinner scene yeah. and another scene where Grandpa just can't get it done. He can't get it up anymore. More. Which doesn't hit as hard as the last, no. like in the first movie. Like I think that's a really that's the one scene where I feel like the dark comedy that Toby Hooper's talking about really shines yeah. through in the original. Yeah, and this just feels like a long, longer version of that. Yeah, somehow long, and that it's 
really long in that original. Like just having just rewatched it. Sure it is. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you trim this scene down by like, I don't know, 80% mm-hmm. and then put that movie theater scene mm-hmm. back in. Like, right. Yeah. You get the same amount of runtime. So why not? Mm-hmm. And if you're going to do this repeat of the dinner scene, mm-hmm. cut it significantly to just Dennis Hopper coming in to save the day because he eventually does. Totally. Oh, by the way, we should mention too, Tom Savini said this makeup for the grandpa, he says is personally the best work he's ever done. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, but they do a real extreme close up of this guy and you can see all the scenes uh-huh. because of course- It's also on Blu-ray now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, nobody expected you to be able to see it that close. I don't think it looks as scary as the makeup in the nope. first movie, even though that's just straight up a, le- a, a rubber mask. And I, I think it's because the lighting, yeah. like when he's lit, he's lit very well. So you can see, like I said, you can see all the scenes. Mm-hmm. You can see the actor's mouth behind- the fake mouth a lot. Right, right. So he kind of looks like Wishmaster. Oh my God. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it. Stay tuned for Wishmaster. <laughs> it's coming up real soon. I, 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 I say that because I have just seen it for mm-hmm. the first time recently. Yeah. I've seen all four. Oh, you poor baby. No, 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 no. I had a fucking <laughs> blast. I had such, I'm like, how have I not seen these movies like 20 times wow. before? I mean, they're bad. Yeah, Don't we'll get me talk wrong. About but it. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, coming sir. Coming up very soon. So stay tuned. Hell yeah. So Dennis Hopper shows up uh-huh. and we get a chainsaw fight and it's it's fine. Pretty good. It's fine. Yeah. I guess because we've seen Mandy and other movies with chainsaw fights now at this point that, sure. you know, I mean, this has got to be one of the earliest yeah if not the earliest Mm -hmm. but it's fine there's just there's just a lot happening here the choreography is not great and it's a lot of it's a lot of close-ups too yeah i gotta say uh i mean jim side the cook Mm -hmm. always making references about how the small businessman gets it up the ass and he does with this chainsaw (laughs) it's pretty good he sure does yeah it's a good joke and uh Everyone gets blown the fuck up. Everyone except Stretch and uh, Chop Top. Yeah. There's a grenade out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite of Chekhov's grenade. This thing just appears. Yeah. He's just like, oh, by the way, the hitchhiker had it in his pocket this whole mm-hmm. time. Bill Mosley gets an open wire from a lamp to his metal plate, which yeah. I thought, ooh, that's that's really good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Before we get to this final set piece. Yeah. What? What is <laughs> this amusement park? Great question. Right? Um, it's it, it was real. It was like a real amusement park that got like demolished sure. right after the shoot, but I, I have no idea. Is is the theme because I don't think Death. Well, <laughs> I don't think any of this Well, I guess I can't say that because they're I was gonna say I don't think any of this underground stuff is officially a part of it. Mm-hmm. But there is like slides and like game looking things down there, like Yeah. I don't know. It's called, what, Texas Battlegrounds? Yeah. Or something like that? Uh, according to this, it was called the Matterhorn. Oh. A family adventure. But that's the real name of the park, right? Yes. What's, is yeah. it the name in the movie, like the Texas Battlegrounds or something like that? The, the, ba- the yeah, Texas Battle. Yeah. Weird. I don't know what the theme is of it. Like, it's no not like idea. Wild West or anything like that. Well, so. and it's always like, you know, like there's there's the winter park mm-hmm. in the outskirts of Gotham City. That's, <laughs> that's true. Just like, that's the only thing you use it for is yeah. winter. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Nathan, this is your movie. Yeah, sure is. And we're at the end here. Why don't you recap for the audience uh, what happens here at the end? Sure thing. Uh, Chop Top chases Stretch and uh, up a tube yeah I, <laughs> to, into a tower the steepest stairs of all time <laughs> uh where they find what appears to be the corpse of uh the sawyer family's grandmother mm-hmm. uh but much like uh grandpa in the first movie she's still hanging on by a thread apparently yeah uh stretch pulls a chainsaw that's like fused to her body mm-hmm. and uses it to kill chop top and then in a, in a scene mirroring the ending of the first movie, Stretch, now completely out of her mind, dances around, does a pirouette with the chainsaw, smash to credits. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a couple of really good things here at this ending. Yeah. Um, the explosion with the grenade is really cool. Yeah. Um, assumedly... Because the canon of these movies don't matter at all. Right. That's the end of Leatherface. Yeah. Of uh, Grandpa, mm-hmm. of The Cook, and of course, Dennis Hopper. Um, Bill Mosley, 
has this really dull straight razor that he's just slashing it stretches oh, back with. right. Sure. Yeah. That's really good. As she's trying to get the chainsaw going, he's stabbing her in the back with it. It's pretty good. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a really intense scene and it like, it looks all painful. Yes. And then this fall, cause she gets him with the chainsaw in this, in the gut. Mm-hmm. This fall he does, this stun is really brutal. It's really good, but you know that that hurt. Oh, like, it that hurt. had to have hurt. But the thing is, it, I don't think it's a stunt, man. I think it's Bill Mosley. I think so too. Yeah, and he, he it almost like a cartoon. He falls off this thing into a slide. He tumbles it's funny. and then yeah, <laughs> falls down that little that little hole. Yeah, uh, presumably to end up in the hospital in all American massacre. Yes, <laughs> and I think my only gripe with this ending is if you're going to do this of mirroring the the ending of the first movie but instead it's the final girl doing it the survivor yeah i think you gotta have leatherface and her go at it instead of her and bill mosley i know yeah it it does yeah but then don't you feel like that maybe robs lefty of his uh his victory well he he gets the cook who's in the first movie and you're getting the twin brother that's true of uh, the, the hitchhiker. hitchhiker from the first movie and honestly i don't think lefty I don't want to say deserves to get Leatherface, but <laughs> I mean, he's introduced in this movie. He, he He's not even built up as much of a character. Yeah. So like, I'm fine if the final girl gets it, but a little more so than that, I need to see her losing her mind. Yeah. Yes. She is swinging the chainsaw around and she's kind of doing some yells, but I need like close ups like we got in the. The original ending. Sure. I need her screaming, covered in blood. Like, I mean, and that is like that's the that's the image that always sticks with me from the first Texas Chainsaw. Yes. Sally in the back of the truck, her eyes wild while she's covered in blood. Yes, soaked in blood. Like her life has been ruined, even yes. though she survived this. And you know, even, he's a, a speck in the distance. Yeah, at some points, and she's still like, "No, I'm not safe." Yeah, I need. Stretch laughing maniacally. Yeah, like, that's true. That she needs to be, she needs to become the Joker, right? Here. <laughs> that's true. The People's Joker. Oh, uh, speaking of that, I, I really want to see that movie. I hope. Yeah, well, it's, I saw someone tweet the other day. I can't wait to see that on Tubi in like six months. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Tubi. Oh by my the gosh, way. the 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 horror fans' best friend in streaming. I would say yes, the champion of horror. And and honestly, I'm going to say it. Cinema alone. <laughs> Tubi is the rated king. Yeah. It's, shout out to Tubi. If sure. you can't find anything, you can sure as fuck find it on Tubi. Where else are you going to watch Shark Side of the Moon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've only got two other little notes here. Yeah, go for it. I thought it was interesting that only men die in this movie. Mm-hmm. No female victims at all. Right. Unless you count grandma and 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 still kind of a still kind of a smallish um death count in Very this movie small. as well there's just like the first one rick the prick and buzz yeah at the beginning um there's lg mm-hmm. there's technically lefty leatherface bill mosley mm-hmm. uh the cook mm-hmm. and that's pretty much it like, yeah. there's not there are not a lot of victims which i mean the original doesn't have a lot of victims either so right exactly but yeah i thought that was interesting only men died in this movie yeah and we got to talk about this, too, because this is wild. The actor that plays LG, yeah. Lou Perryman, have you read up about this guy at all? Um, No. I mean, I know he was in – he's in Poltergeist, right? He might be. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of more talking about, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, his, his tragic death. Oh, gosh. Did you hear about this at all? No, I'm looking at it right now. So, he died in 2009 mm-hmm. at his home in Austin, Texas. A 26-year-old guy – was released from prison for aggravated robbery. I don't want to say the guy's name and give him any credit or anything, but mm-hmm. uh, he was off his meds and drinking. He broke into the guy's house and killed him with an axe. Good Lord. Yeah. That's awful. Uh, terrible. And the guy was later caught, confessed, and sentenced to life in prison. So wow. there's at least somewhat of a, a justified ending to that story. But yeah, I thought that was crazy because I yeah. was looking this guy up and I was like, what else has he been in? And yeah, unfortunately in 2009, that went down. So Wow, that's awful. Real bad. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, yes, he is in he is in Poltergeist. Wow. So, yeah. Rest in peace, uh, Lou Perryman. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't want to bring us down too much with that story, so why don't I bring it back up <laughs> sure. and we can talk about something that uh, is very fun yeah. on the other side of things. So, let's talk about Prop Cop. Ta-da. All right. 
Nathan, lots of good props, actually, I think, in this movie. Yeah. Um, plenty to choose from. And for those who are uninitiated, um, and we're we're well into the podcast, and I should have mentioned this at the top, but <laughs> for those who haven't listened to us before, uh, we are a podcast mm -hmm. that watches movies like Texas Chainsaw Part 2 that don't really have like a happily ever after ending. Sure. And uh, we try to come up with the silver lining for those characters at the end. I mean, yes, Stretch lives, but... Uh, Woo! <laughs> what a what a wild ride she went through. And Prop Cop, the segment we're in now, is we look at all the different props that are in the movie. And prop, it's kind of a very loose word sure. that we use around here. Uh, anything physical and tangible in the movie. And we we steal it. We say that's ours now. So, <laughs> right. Nathan, what's your prop cop? I There is a poster in the radio station uh -huh. that I really want. I'm going to send you a picture of it real okay. quick. But it is a it's a, a very rare yes. cover for a Beatles compilation yes, I was called <laughs> Yesterday and Today. I was going to bring this up. Yeah. Do you want to tell the, the story behind this cover? It, it, it's known as the Butcher cover. Yes. And it is a picture of the Beatles in white coats covered in di uh, dismembered baby dolls mm -hmm. and m raw meat. Yes. It just covered in blood. Just a truly unhinged cover. Which you would not expect from the Beatles. From the Beatles. <laughs> and they're smiling ear to ear. It is, uh, it's very uh, kind of famous among Beatles fans as one that was pulled off the market very quickly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, I thought that that was such a funny. Bam, 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 value, value, value. <laughs> Can I tell you that was an accident, but it kind of fit perfect. It works. It works. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I was just very pleased to see. I thought that was such a funny reference to throw into this uh, movie about cannibalism. Such an interesting idea. And it, I'm, I mean, the whole point of the cover, as the Beatles tell you, is it's uh, mm -hmm. protesting against the Vietnam War. Right. And we got a Vietnam vet. Yeah, fits with Chop Top yeah. for sure. That's that's. A, I'm glad you picked that because I wrote that down initially. Uh huh. There's there's so many good ones. There are. Can I do like a like a like a five to one like list of what I had for mine. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're missing a guy today. So That's I think it's true. fine to go a little longer in these segments. That's true. Well, here's what I think Mally probably would have said. The entire record vault at the <laughs> sure. radio station. <laughs> sure. That's a gold mine of good shit in there. Absolutely. My joke one was going to be the cooler full of ice and beer and soda, but <laughs> then Leatherface ruined that for me. I also thought Mally was going to pick the uh, the food truck. The whole food <laughs> truck. <laughs> yeah, Drayton Sawyer's food truck. Yeah. My other joke one was Mr. Shark, oh, which yeah. if you don't remember is the- Oh my God. That sequence is genuinely funny. <laughs> Pretty I think. funny. When she's, show it, she's like, here's a lamp, here's yep. a rubber man, here's yep. Mr. Shark, here's flowers here's the exit yep <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty good mr shark flowers the the license plate for buzz's car is pretty good f a h oh fuck Q, you fuck you that's pretty good <laughs> but my ultimate yeah uh the one i landed on is i kind of want rick the prick's glasses oh yeah the x-ray specs i think they're pretty funny mm -hmm. they're pretty cool <laughs> so that's what i'm gonna go with good call now here's the real interesting one because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of options. Right. But the next segment here is bit part. Mm -hmm. So for again, for those who don't know, this is where we look at all the extras in the movie mm -hmm. and we recast one of them with ourselves, just so we can have a nice little filmography building up here in the backgrounds of movies. Definitely. What do you what do you have, Nathan? I, I kinda like the idea of being the announcer at the chili cook off. Oh, okay. I get a, yeah, get a get a couple of lines with Jim Sidow, right. and I, I get to try some of that dank chili. Oh my god, I've had chili in a while. <laughs> T today's not the day to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I went with the cut right chainsaw owner. That, yes, the guy that has the bananas. Line. Oh my kid banana. <laughs> I get to have a, a scene with Dennis Hopper and then yeah. I get to deliver the most batshit fucking line ever. <laughs> so Absolutely. That's what I went with. Well, we only have uh, time for a little bit more here yeah. and we got to get to the whole crux of the show. The reason for the season. Yeah, the part that I would say we probably honestly put the least amount of effort into, but <laughs> the silver linings. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. So I, I have two here. Okay. So one is the joke one that I think Mally might have had. Mm -hmm. The cook didn't have to close his business and go through a painful liquidation process. Ah, uh, okay. Mine is very close to that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> and my real one is uh, presumably Stretch makes her way back to civilization, and now the authorities will believe that the massacre happened. Yeah, including the original. Very true. 
And a little bit of credence to that and the fact that we see Stretch in another uh, Chainsaw movie. That's right. Technically. And looking a lot more well-adjusted yeah. than we last saw her. Yes. I kind of went through two. I didn't want to go with the obvious one of mm-hmm. Lefty getting his closure about his niece and nephew. I think that's a good one, though. It's a pretty good one. But the one I went with, and it's a joke one, but mm-hmm. I do think some credence to it. This is the one time it's okay for the small businessman to get it in the ass. <laughs> like, that guy deserved death and yes, nothing sir. else. And he got it in a like a very fitting, ironic way. Mm-hmm. So, I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> so, so, that's that's mine. I think that that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, again, Stretch lives. Mm-hmm. Everybody is dead besides her that deserves to be dead. So, it's, you know. If you ignore the sequels, which again, they kind of ignore this one too. Yeah. Everything turns out well. The the fourth movie, the fourth movie crawl starts with them saying something like, there were two other minor incidents that cannot be proven or something minor. like that, which is really funny. Minor incidents. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that leaves us with the double feature, yeah. a.k.a. the Pick Me Up movie alternative. Now, let's say you're watching Texas Chainsaw Part 2, you get to the end, and you're just you're just a wreck. You're like, <laughs> oh my god, that was scary. Yeah. I, I need something else to bring me back down, something to- For stretch. Oh, yeah. You need a stretch. Get up, do a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> That's a good idea. What's a movie you should put on right after- that will give a good tonal balance mm-hmm. for Texas Chainsaw 2. What do you got? Um, I think if you want to have something that's a little bit fun, but also stick with the horror train and Dennis Hopper doing bonkers work, uh, go with George A. Rom- George A. Romero's Land of the Dead. Mm. Uh, a movie that I think is a little underrated. It's not as good as his other dead films. I need to rewatch it. But uh, there's some really fun stuff, and Dennis Hopper is truly just swinging for the fences in it. True. Well, I went with Chef. No. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say it's about another small uh, small businessman who's a chef, but no. Ratatouille. <laughs> I'm actually going to go with the movie I did watch right after this, mm-hmm. which we mentioned already, but I think you should watch Electric Boogaloo. Yes. The wild, untold story of canon films, which is, as we talked about earlier, it's a documentary showing you the rise and fall of canon, yeah. the studio behind this movie. And you get the full story, and you get a little bit of mention about this movie, too. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I don't think it's a great documentary no. uh, in terms of the filmmaking, but it does tell the story, and you get some wild anecdotes in there. It's worth it for the stuff about the Masters of the Universe yes. and Superman, Superman 4. 4. Yeah. yeah. All the stuff with Chuck Norris is covered in there that's really funny. Wild stuff, yeah. Which is, it's kind of sad. That we don't have the closest thing we have to a canon now is like asylum films, but yeah, and full. I mean, Full Moon Entertainment is still going, but they're mm-hmm. like a shadow of what they used to do as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I man, that it's just a time period we'll never get again, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, the the direct to video market like really changed how movies were being made for a little while. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And this is something. We're supposed to do with horror movies, and we forgot to do it with Hellraiser and Halloween 4. My goodness. Best kill. Who's the best kill? Yeah. What do you got? Boy, um, this is a tough one. I, I got to – well, no, actually, I got to give it to Buzz. Buzz is really good. Yeah. It's so simple, but that, that effect, man, that practical effect is insane. It's really good. Yeah. For me, I think it's LG. Mm-hmm. Just because it's – it's so long. It's so <laughs> prolonged. And it it's insane that he's – somehow still alive yeah. and he's his death is somewhat beneficial because he does get stretch out of those bindings yeah so and he gets to lay down and die yeah like he, he like he's like okay now i'm chilling kind of on his own terms yeah 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 i can't believe we didn't do that for hellraiser and halloween 4 we will Man. don't worry listener we will make up for that in next week's episode i'm sure <laughs> where so much death yeah So, lastly, Mm -hmm. before we get out of here, Nathan, do you recommend this movie? I I would say so. Mm -hmm. I think at least give it one watch. If you if you saw the original and and thought it was insane, this is a different kind of insane. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the problems that a lot of the Texas Chainsaw sequels have uh, is that they try to hew too close to the original and it just comes off as kind of a pale imitation. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one, for better or worse, goes its own gonzo route, and it's a fun time. Yeah, I would say I do recommend it under the pretense that you understand <laughs> that even though this is a sequel to the original, right? it has returning characters from the original, <laughs> and it has a lot of DNA from the original, it is definitely not 
the original. Isn't that so? Like, how many movies can you really say do that? Uh, right? <laughs> like, it, it's not even. It, it just fully. It it is a sequel that is a completely different kind of movie. I I not. I can't think of any that are the direct sequel from the original. Like, right. Halloween 1 and 2 are the most direct sequels I think you can get. I mean, close. the closest thing I can think of, it, also in terms of how long it was between sequels, is Phantasm 2. Because that one becomes like an action movie. That's the only one I haven't seen. Oh, right. Because it was one. missing from the P section at Movie Stop. Because it was banned. <laughs> yeah, because it was banned. While, and yeah, I never yeah. saw it. Yeah. It's a weird one. Maybe maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll visit it. I mean, all of those are so strange. Very strange. Um, I mean, also, it's made by canon, so you get what you get with this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. If you, listener, have some feedback, you want to tell us your thoughts about Texas Chainsaw Part 2, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, excuse me, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <laughs> Seems to be some confusion if the word part is in there or not. Yeah. The Legend of Drayton's Gold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the legend of Drayton's Chili. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got some feedback you want to give us about the movie or about the show in general, you can do so by emailing us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. You can also DM us on Instagram and Twitter. And I actually, just because I felt like I had to be done, I shut down the Facebook page for this. So I'm sorry if you're on Facebook still. Honestly, I don't like us even being on Instagram just out of uh, <laughs> association. Yeah, yeah, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, so email us or DM us on Instagram or Twitter or go over to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Mm -hmm. Let us know your thoughts there. There's uh, official discussion threads on all these movies. So feel free to do so there. And yeah, if you haven't already, the podcast roundup, please subscribe and I, I know we, we say this all the time and all the podcasts say this, but mm -hmm. please, we really would enjoy just taking a few seconds of your time to give us a rating. Yeah. I'm not even asking for a five-star rating. Just yeah. <laughs> anything would be great. And also, like, reviews are genuinely so exciting to see. Like, when exciting the new one pops and up. and helpful. It is, yes. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, while we're doing the show and I think we've got the formula nailed, there's always, mm -hmm. you know, room for improvement. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let us know your honest thoughts. We'd really appreciate that. Yeah. And, uh you know, we, we did this before the season started, but follow us on Twitter and Instagram because you never know. We may do some giveaways yep. uh, every now and then. So, they may not even be related to the show. No, right. <laughs> I may just be cleaning out my closet and say, hey, I'll give this shit away. <laughs> and uh, on a on a very interesting note, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, I am going to be, uh, or it may have already aired at this point, but uh, I'm guessing on Not A Bomb podcast talking about Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Oh, that's a good pairing. And then next month in November, my other podcast, Oh, That's a Scary Movie, I will be completing the hat trick with an episode on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. Oh boy, you're in for you're you're like saddled in for this franchise. I'm doing this for you people. <laughs> <laughs> I swear Nathan watches good movies. I, I really swear do. It. I do. I just they they tend to be less fun to talk about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, my clue for next week is if I die, Nathan, mm -hmm. would you uh throw away my drugs and my paraphernalia? <laughs> My, my porno yeah just you know everything that's gonna break my mom's heart i think uh i think it's an unspoken rule among the three of us that that shall happen <laughs> thank you very much yeah anyway i think that's a good place to leave it mm -hmm. texas chainsaw part two is something yeah it sure it sure is a film <laughs> you put that right on the box art <laughs> it is a film as Mally would like to say i press play it played all the way through yeah all right. Well, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get out of here? I think I think we have talked about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. <laughs> oh, ignore that. <laughs> yeah, I think we've talked. I think we've talked circles around the Texas Chainsaw Massacre part two. We may already be longer than the movie itself, I think which we seems are. impossible. You know, join us maybe <laughs> next season for Leatherface: The Origins of Batman's Butler. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. One last thing. We're, there's tons of franchises we haven't done because yes. for some reason we have a boner for the Halloween ones. We can now. That's why we threw this one in. Yeah. <laughs> we can now scratch off Leatherface from that God one. God bless. And we did Hellraiser. So we got, two, look at that. Mm -hmm. Two mm -hmm. huge franchises. We finally covered one. So there you go. And later this season, more wishes will come true. Oh my God. I can't <laughs> wait. It's not, I'm just going, yeah, we're doing Wishmaster at some point this season. Don't fucking worry, listener. It's coming. I'm so excited to talk about that movie. Hell yeah. All right. So thank you, listener, for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week where we're talking about, uh, hopefully, a movie that 
we have on the schedule that will work. Yeah, we'll find <laughs> so out. We'll find out. Uh, we really should have planned better for this. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Oatmeal. And Lefty. Oh, and Lefty. <laughs> 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 this list is just ever growing. As always, <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> Ye- 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 yeehaw. Yeehaw indeed. Meet Celsior. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. That's a, that's Sorry. a boo. Yep. That's a nope. boo. <laughs> I tried. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!